As the scientific reports keep coming about the acceleration of the effects of climate change and the news reports about extreme weather events and other calamities, and the obviousness of the ruling class's extreme indifference to the fate of the rest of us as a result of all this, it's no surprise that a great many people are starting to speculate as to whether the extinction of our species, humanity, is nigher than we hoped. But it does look very, very grim. The polar ice caps are melting, temperature records are constantly being revised, calamitous weather events pile on each other, and unless you're one of those who regards it all as hooey, it's a bit hard to look at current affairs and not harbour some anxiety at least about that the whole of our civilizations around us, as integrated and vulnerable as they are, are on the edge of collapse. It's hard not to at least have some sympathy for those who are vigorously protesting and otherwise acting against all this. People by and large don't want to die, or at least die what they regard as untimely deaths. You wonder what they regard as timely dying, but at least it's obvious that cities drowning, food supplies parching, forests burning and every other disaster is not how they'd prefer, their own lives and the lives of those they love and care about included. It makes sense for people to feel angry and frustrated and want to resist it. But it also makes sense to look at all that resistance and feel more than a tinge of cynicism. After all, if the previous hundreds of thousands of times people have protested and blockaded and boycotted and so on haven't reduced emissions and brought down the rise in temperature, why should anyone expect another hundred thousand times being a different result? We all know the definition of stupidity. But, again, there's no telling people this. Because, like I said, they're angry and frustrated. The other thing is they're frightened, and again, that's no fault for them. It is frightening. In the last analysis, it is very scary to live in a world that we know is getting progressively and increasingly worse, more difficult to live in materially, which is where it really counts. While our stupid differences that we constantly fight each other over are important in the context of that fighting, but all of us still have to breathe. Still, there is an important existential view on all this that is both important and existential and that is also material and far from idealistic and indeed elemental. So maybe look at it this way. Death is inevitable. But don't look at that as some kind of sarcastic throwaway line that's meant to not confront the facts head on. Actually take it into consideration. Be serious about this one basic fact. Death is inevitable and this has been a known factor since year dot. The question arises then, what's changed? And the obvious answer is nothing. That we all die individually, we know. That we as a species will die out is also known. So if that extinction does come about through climate change, as opposed to any other way, nothing has really changed. And again, that isn't meant to be taken trivially. There are those, for example, who will say that it's a good thing that the world is better off without we humans and ra de ra They're called cunts. They're being trivial about the whole process just to score points. Usually these are dicky birds in comparatively comfortable conditions compared to others. But there are people in the world who have lost everything, loved ones included, to the consequences of the change on the planet's environment and they don't take it trivially. They already know the tragedy and misery of death through this horrible process. We can talk about the effects of climate change in the past tense now. And that's what has to be taken seriously. The grief and trauma of this process needs to be faced as head-on as we possibly can. It's almost impossible though, so people can't really be blamed for not doing it. But the idea, at least, is that if this is our cause of extinction, then it needs to be seen for what it is. That is a tragedy which will cause utmost misery until the last one of us expires. But what if this isn't our extinction? My concern is that it isn't. I fear our species will last a long, long time into the future, whether as a greatly reduced species or, who knows, even continue to proliferate. After all, we don't really know what will happen. The people who know best can make the best educated guesses, and I defer to their authority. But for myself, and I'm pretty sure for the rest of us, we lay people have no clue what will happen. Which raises the question again, what's changed? And again, nothing. Our end has always, and will always remain, a mystery to us. We can never really know. And so concerns about human extinction are, while emotionally legitimate, intellectually a bit redundant. We've always been under a death sentence from the start. That hasn't changed because that couldn't change. Whether it's right now or a billion years time, it doesn't matter because our extinction is assured. What we do in the meantime is far from me to say, but I would hazard that it'll be what we've been doing so far, which is what we always do as a species. It's not as if we can do anything else. Which means that, ultimately, we are stuck with whatever is going on to whatever end it may be. And we always were. 